Hey everyone. So if you're watching this video, you're probably wondering either how to get started with task eight projects or you're just trying to learn a bit more about them. So let's just get right into it. What are our task eight projects? Well, task eight projects, you can think of them as your collaborative documents. They're essentially where all your notes, your uh, tasks, anything that's related to your project, all of that content information is going to be located within your task eight project. And we're just going to get started. You first go to your workspace, so log into Taskscape, and you'll see something similar to this screen if it's your first time. And what you're going to do is there are a couple ways to actually create a project. Now, you're going to press on the Create New at the top right, and you'll see there's an option to create one with AI. You can start a blank one. You can import, so using documents from other places, any existing uh, SOPs or any information that you might want to use in Taskade, you can import that from here. And if you have any custom templates, you could create one right here, or you can use one of our own. But what we're going to do is we're going to do it in my favorite way, which is creating it with AI. So you're going to choose this button right here, and then you're going to see this modal pop up. And over here, there are a few presets. So if you want your projects to basically list out your processes and tasks and stuff, you can choose either projects or workflows. If you want to create mind maps, so for brainstorming or content outlines, mind maps are great. You can choose that preset. If you want to summarize information or you want to create content for other people to read, content is a great preset. And then there's also notes. So notes are great for like summarizing podcasts or other websites and blogs and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to choose projects. And I'm going to say, create a go-to-market strategy for Tascade. Now, you can choose one of our prompts that we have in this prompt library, or you can just use your own like I did right here. And what you want to do is you want to add files and links. So you can choose one of these options. And what that's going to do is AI is going to reference this information to generate your project for you. So this is great for onboarding new clients. You might want to attach information that they should know. So for example, creating a go-to-market strategy, I want to add Taskade's website so it can reference that information and personalize this project that is creating for that. And if you hover over it, you'll see the source will be included. If you want to delete it, you just press that trash can icon right there. And I'm going to press this or enter. And what this is going to do is it's going to create a project for me. And obviously this saves me a ton of time because I had to sit here and organize and type out all of this and you can see it's just going on. So it's a good starting point. I'm just press create project. And now we have our project right here. I'm just going to close these sidebars. Now your project has multiple views. And what that means, views are essentially the way your data is displayed in your project. And you can alternate between them by clicking on word view. If you have deadlines assigned to these any tasks, you would see them on the calendar view. You could see it as a table. You can switch it into a mind map, an organization chart, or even a Gantt chart. Now I'm just gonna stick to list view. And now everything over here is a node in your project. So this is a node, that's a node. Everything's a node, but it's just formatted differently. Now, what does that mean? Well, if I click on this drag icon on the left-hand side, you'll see it says small heading. I can change that to be a checkbox. And now that small heading was changed into a checkbox. And I'm just gonna put it back. Now, the other aspect is that, well, that's great and all, but how do I sign stuff? How do I add due dates, right? What you want to do is you just want to click on any one of these nodes and you want to click the add-ons on the, on the right-hand side. You can click on this and then from here, you'll see options. You can assign a due date. So for example, I can make this due on the 19th and you'll see it pop up over here. Now I can also assign it to someone specifically, such as myself. And if I wanted to add any comments, make sure to check in with the client. 
purchase it. And now I have comments attached to this as well. Now, if I wanted to do this in bulk, I would just click and drag, and then you'll see this toolbar pop up on the bottom, and I can just choose due date from here. And I can choose 19, and we're actually gonna see it's from the 17th to the 19th. And you'll see it updates all over here. I can also bulk assign as well. And if I wanted to, I can even check them off. And you'll see when you check these off, your progress bar at the top right, at the top over here updates immediately. Now, projects also have their own due dates. So, for example, I could say this spans from the 2nd to the 30th. I can assign multiple people. Right now it's just me in this workspace, so I can just do that. And then you could also create your own tags. So, for example, whether this is high, in progress, assign multiple ones. If I wanted to create a new one, I could just create a new tag right here. Now, once you have your data over here, you can actually move it around or even nest it. So you see that there's no toggleable icon on the left hand. So what I would do is once I press tab on the node that I want to indent over here, you'll see this becomes foldable now. And you can always format your data into different things as well, from the bulk as well. So if I wanted to change these into a checkbox, we just press on checkbox over here, and now they're all checkbox. The other aspect is that you can star your projects, and when you star your projects, you'll find them in your star section over here. Now, if you're trying to collaborate with other people, there are a couple options for that. One, you'll toggle chat on the right, and then press team chat. And there's a couple things you can do. You can say every project comes with its own chat. So I can say, hey, where are we on this? And other people can reply. In this case, it's just me. And you can also hop on a call as well. So if I press on the call icon, you'll be able to hop on a call. You can even copy the call link and share that with your team members or with your clients for them to join in. You can also share your project. So when you click on the share button at the top, you can either invite someone to your workspace or you can invite them to this specific project. You can copy the link, email it, embed a project, or even publish it for the web. And when you copy the link to share, you'll have different permission levels and users can access that information from the state. The other thing is that you can set a default view. So if I wanted to see it as a list view, I can just click on, double click on this and it'll say, you'll see that star icon pop up. And you'll see it's a, the default view. So whenever someone visits it, this is what they'll see. And you can always change it by double clicking on something else. The other aspect is that you can also attach files so I can upload a file from my computer, Google Drive, wherever else I want. I can also embed files to this as well. And that's really helpful for whenever you're collaborating with other people, just to have all of your data in one place. Now, the other thing that you can do is you can actually see your project's history. So you can see the changes that I've made over here. If I wanted to restore to a previous version, I could press on version history over here and I can just do this and restore back here. Now, the next thing I might want to do is, let's say I want to add my own custom fields. What I want to do is switch over to the table view over here. And you can manage the fields that are available. So I'm going to hide the agents. I'll hide the reactions, timer, and other stuff over here. And now if I press add column, I can actually create my own custom fields over here, or I can use one of the presets that are available. So I'm just gonna choose status. And then from here, I could say in progress, if I wanna change this, I can always just edit the field, add my own options, and add a description as well. Now, let's talk about how to customize your project and make it even more presentable, right? 
So I'm just gonna switch back into list view over here. And I wanna edit this project icon. I'll just put a thumbs up right here. Now the other thing that I can do is go to project settings and you'll see we have a few other options. So you can upload your own images for the background. You can change this setup. So if you prefer the banner at the top, as opposed to a regular background or just none to kind of have a more clean appearance, you can do that from here. You can also choose a few default settings. So if you want to hide the project chat or if you want to disable comments, you can do that from here and you can choose a default view as well. So I'm just going to put it back to background. I'm going to choose one of the colors. I like this blue. I'm going to set it for that. Now, if you're working in your project, you might want to sort a few things around. So let's say my due dates for this are 27. What I might want to do is I might want to sort these, right? So I'm just going to actually click on the three dots over here. I'm going to do sort by. And you can choose whether you want to sort them by completed, uncompleted, A to Z, or reverse alphabetical. There's a tag, there's any mentions, or due dates, or start dates, or date created. So I'm just going to indent these. And then I'm going to sort this, and you'll see that it's appear now. I'm just going to sort this by due date. And you'll see that since this one is later, it'll sort it all the way to the bottom. The other thing is if you have tags, so if you do hashtag and then add a label to it, if you click on those, it'll actually filter by matching tags. So you'll see this one says research and this one says researcher. So it'll bring up any matching tags as well. And you can export your projects as well by pressing export. And you can export it as an image, text, markdown file, or even PDF. If you prefer to, you can print it. And let's say you really like this project, you want this to be your go-to template, you want to recreate it, just tailor it for whoever else, you can just go to more options over here, add to templates, and then once you're creating a new project, you can always just choose one of the templates from here. And yeah, that's your overview of how projects in Taskade work.